Let's face it, phones have become pretty boring. Aside from the candy bar form factor of various sizes and how many cameras phone makers can cram into a chassis, nothing really groundbreaking has happened over the past few years. The foldable phone, however, changes that. Remember the Motorola StarTech? Well, for those who do, and if you're all like me, the StarTech was the first ever clamshell, aka flip phone, that was 1996. And fast forward to 2019, the likes of Samsung and Huawei and Motorola decided to have a go at this flip thing. And the Galaxy Fold and the Huawei Mate X were first out of the gates with a similar delivery, a smartphone that folds out into a bigger tablet-sized device. The Galaxy Fold, as you know, was plagued with some reliability and durability issues in its first iteration. The Mate X fared better, but both were and still are horrendously expensive. Then along came the Motorola Razr, paying homage to the original clamshell Razr. Motorola seemed to have nailed the clamshell design with a very clever hinge mechanism. And while it has its faults, including disappointing mid-level specs for its flagship level price, the Razer appealed to those who want a compact phone. For me, the form factor makes sense. I don't want a tablet in my pocket. And in February, Samsung gave us this, the Galaxy Z Flip. Thanks to Samsung Malaysia, I've been using one for a couple of weeks. I know love is a strong word, but you know what? I think I love the Galaxy Z Flip. Let me tell you why. First, let's get a few things out of the way. Let's take a look at the hardware. Now here's what's under the hood. A Qualcomm Snapdragon 855 Plus chip, coupled with 8GB of RAM and 256GB of onboard storage. Granted, it isn't the latest chipset, but it certainly isn't a slouch. Being super compact, there is no microSD expansion and there's a single card slot for a nano SIM. There's a side-mounted fingerprint sensor and a down-firing single speaker. Unfortunately, there's no 3.5mm headphone jack. So in terms of the camera, it offers a dual cam setup with a 12 megapixel f1.7 wide-angle shooter with OIS and a 12 megapixel f2.2 ultra wide angle camera. Over on the front is a decent 10 megapixel f2.4 selfie shooter. But what's interesting is the display. When you fold the device out, you'll find a 6.7 FHD plus Infinity Flex display. It's a fancy name, but what's important is that it's a dynamic AMOLED display many have come to love. It has a unique 21.9 by 9 screen ratio, so it's kind of like a tall display. Unlike the Galaxy Fold Mate X or Razer, the Galaxy Z Flip doesn't use plastic P OLED panels. Instead, Samsung ups the game with a revolutionary flexible glass display. The proprietary bendable ultra-thin glass solves a couple of pain points with plastic displays. What we really get annoyed with are creases, bumps, and lumps. What Samsung has done incredibly well is with the Galaxy Z Flip's hideaway hinge. The new hinge mechanism is awesome. It's a dual cam mechanism that ensures the flip and fold action is smooth and stable. The mechanism also uses nylon fibers to repel dirt and dust. But what I really like about the hinge is that it lets the device stay open at a range of angles. Now that's a killer feature. We'll get back to that. Ah, and hang on, there's also a secondary display on the outside. It's a tiny 1.1 inch OLED display that shows basic information like time, notifications, and uh, media controls. Keeping things juiced is a 3300mAh battery that fast charges via USB-C. Not a big battery by modern standards mind you, but decent considering how compact this thing is. And by the way, Samsung bundles a 15W fast charger in the box. It also supports wireless charging up to 9 watts and reverse wireless charging. Okay, so here's what I love about the Galaxy Z Flip. First up, the design. 
I love how compact this thing is. It's a form factor that makes perfect sense. When not in use, it's folded down so that it's pocketable. It's sleek and minimalist, and I think the color treatment on this is spot on. This is the mirror purple, by the way, and it's also available in mirror black. I also love how well built it is. It feels solid and robust. None of the fragility that I felt on the Galaxy Fold. Having a foldable screen has its challenges, and I think one of the most annoying things about them is the notable crease and bumps. The Z Flip's crease though isn't as noticeable as the others. The display is what you expect from Samsung, I guess. It's crisp and bright. I initially felt that the unconventional ratio was weird, but it works well when you have multi-windows or if you're watching a video or playing games. Videos look good, although you need to pinch to zoom in to get rid of the black bars. Unfortunately, it doesn't work with some apps. Uh, for example, IGTV. In terms of performance, I never felt that the phone needed to be quicker or more responsive in any way. It never felt laggy when I was multitasking or switching between apps. Games ran smooth as silk and without drama. I played a little COD and real racing on it and uh, they both ran well. Audio isn't shabby and while the phone only has a single downfiring speaker, it compensates with the earpiece to give you a pseudo stereo kind of sound. Next up, cameras. A dual camera on a phone of this price range sounds kind of ridiculous, but I guess we'll need to accept that there will be compromises when you're working with such a compact form factor. In general, the main camera works decently well. As good, if not similar with a Galaxy S10 or a S10e. There's no fancy space zoom to play around with, unfortunately. The ultra wide is useful, but not the sharpest. The selfie camera isn't bad too and delivers crisp images. It's great for zoom calls too. Speaking of which, I love this hinge. Did I say that already? It's robust, it's silent, and the fact that it can prop itself up at different angles makes it unique and incredibly useful. And now for the bad stuff. For one, battery life. On average, I could get about four to four and a half hours of on-screen time, which is decent, but just not great. Topping 15 watts, charging isn't super fast either. You're looking at around an hour and 45 minutes for a full charge. While the crease is hardly noticeable, it's there, although it's less significant than on the Galaxy Fold. Thirdly, the cameras aren't superb. I think the lack of a telephoto lens may be a deal breaker for some. Finally, perhaps the biggest downside of all is the Galaxy Z's price. At 5,888 ringgit, the Galaxy Z Flip is hardly cheap. All that being said, the Galaxy Z Flip is as unique as they come. Despite some of its shortcomings, I think Samsung has nailed this form factor. It's great looking, it works well. I mean, that hinge, amazing. Do let me know what you think about the phone and this video. Leave your comments below. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. And do consider to subscribe if you like this video because there will be more awesome ones coming your way soon. Until next time, peace and stay safe.